Hi everybody, for today's video, I'm going to be building a simple calculator in Python with some error trapping to prevent users from inputting invalid types of input and handling these types of input by using something called exception handling. And along the way, I'm going to explain the importance of exception handling and how it'll, it's going to be used. So to start off, we're going to create a simple function called calc cal calculator I can spell <laughs> so that's a simple function calculator it doesn't take any arguments or any param it doesn't have any parameters and what we'll start off by doing is taking two numbers so like say one and three and then asking the user what operation they want to do something like do they want to add do they want to minus do they want to multiply do they want to divide and then actually executing that operation and outputting it. So it seems simple enough. So we'll take the first number as a float. And the reason we'll take it as a float or a decimal is in case uh, the user chooses to input decimals because we don't want to cut off the decimals by using a int type. So what we'll do is we'll use float and we'll take an input and turn that input into a float. And we'll prompt the user something like, Please enter a or please enter your first number. Um, then copy that and then change a couple of things. Please enter your second number. So you can see uh, num1, we take a float as an input, num2 we take another float as an input. The next thing we're going to ask is what operation they want to execute. So we're going to call that op for operation. And we'll say, just as a string, because um, a plus, a minus, a slash for division, a star for multiplication are just strings. So we'll just take this input as a string. And we'll give the prompt, please enter an operation. And we'll give a list of options, something like plus, oops, plus, minus, uh, multiplication, division, and then give a space for input. And uh, what we'll do is if the operation is equal to a plus sign, we'll go ahead and say something like an answer, which is going to be our answer variable, is equal to num1 plus num2. Elif the operation is equal to a minus. We'll do the same thing, but we'll say, assign the answer variable equal to num1 minus num2. Elif, the operation is equal to multiplication. We're going to set our answer variable equal to num1 times num2. Finally, um, Elif, the operation is equal to uh, division, we're going to set the answer equal to num1 divided by num2. And finally, uh, so if the user doesn't input anything that isn't a plus, a minus, a multiplication symbol, or a division symbol, we're going to set our answer equal to invalid operation. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do is print um, the answer. So use an F string to format our answer or format our final statement saying something like answer colon ANS. So if you're not familiar with an F string, what this is basically doing is saying, oh, is saying that answer is equal to whatever is stored in answer and in the answer variable by using curly braces to tell Python that this is a variable and not a string. So if I were to go ahead and save that and just enter a while loop and call the calculator function, let's go and see how that looks. So when we run it, it tells us to please enter our first number. So enter in 12, 34, Please enter your an operation. Something like equal, we'll do something like plus, 
And then it tells us that our answer is 46. And then it asks us again, please enter your first number because as you can rem remember, we put it in a while loop. So it'll just keep on running this function. It'll say, please enter your first number. Let's say 45, 455, um, 20, and let's say division. So as you can see, we're getting the correct answer. And uh, this looks a little bit crowded. So what I'll do is I'll just print a empty, oh, an empty line or an enter character by adding a slash n and just seeing how that looks. So uh, 12 by 36 plus, and then there's a space, you can do the same thing. As you can see, it works. So one thing you'll want to note is that whenever you're creating software, you're going to realize that your users are always messing with your stuff. So instead of being nice to your program and just entering a number, they might enter a string. And unfortunately, your program will just crash. And the reason that's happening is because an error is occurring in this line. Oh, in this line here, when you're trying to convert your input into a float. So Python's like, I don't know what that means because the input was a string and I don't know how to convert strings into uh, decimal numbers. So it crashed. Or a, another good example would be if uh, you entered in one, zero, and then you did division. You notice that once again, your program would crash because you can't divide by zero. And as you can see here, it gives you the error, zero division error. So we want to figure out a way to handle these um, errors and give the user the proper feedback or the proper um, things to do in order to remedy that error and make sure that our program doesn't crash while we do this. And the way that we actually can do this is using exception handling in Python. And essentially, what we can do is when we mess with our program, we noticed that there were two main errors that could happen. The first one being is when you enter in improper values for your numbers and uh, the program crashes when it can't convert those. And the next error being when you attempt to divide by zero. So as long as we can isolate and fix those errors, we shouldn't have an issue. So um, what we can do here is use something called a try statement. And I'll shortly explain after I write the code up what happens when we call a try statement. So much like an if statement or a if block or an else if block or an else block, we have to um, do write the keyword try, put a colon and tab everything over. So what this is telling Python is to try and do this. And then after trying to do this, if any error occurs, so if, so what we're gonna do is accept error. And in this case, the only error that we know of that can happen is a value error. So let's go ahead and copy that. So accept the value error as an error and the error is a variable that we're assigning the value error that is happening. And what we'll do is something like print invalid number input. And we'll just give a space for the next line. So we have a little bit of separation and we can print something like the actual error that occurred within the program. And then we can print something like try again, or yeah, try again, and add another slash n. And after um, going ahead and trying again, we'll use the return keyword. Because what happens is once they're entering improper inputs, we want to just return. And when you use return in a function, it just 
breaks out of the function. So as soon as we enter or do something that the calculator knows is going to cause an error, we accept the error, we print some pieces of information, and we break out of the function by using the return keyword. And then since we're in a while loop, it'll run this process again. So to recap, what a try statement does is that it goes ahead and tries whatever's in the block. And if any exceptions or errors occur, you can use this statement. So the accept statement, and in this case, we're accepting any value errors that may occur because that's the only error that we know that could happen. So accept value error as the error. So if you remember here, the error statement when you had a value error was um, value error, could not convert string to float. And that was the string. So it's accepting that value error as error. So whatever the error was is going to be stored in this variable. And it'll go ahead and accept it, make sure not to crash the program, print invalid number input, print the error, and print try again. And after saying try again, it'll break out of the function by using the return keyword. And the function will still run again, because we're in a while. So let's go ahead and see that in practice. So if you can see, it asks us to please enter our first number. Say we entered in some gibberish. And um, we can see it tells us invalid number input could not convert string to float that try again. It broke out of the function and it asks us again, please enter your first number. And uh, let's say we were nice this time. We did something two, three, two, and then we decided to be mean again. We entered in some random string. And as you can see, the same thing happens, even though we're messing with a second number and it says invalid number input could not convert string to float. Whatever the string was, try again. And it loops us back to the beginning of the first number. So that seems to be in order. But um, so say we entered in one, zero, and we went to divide. It still crashes. So we still need to handle that. And one other thing that I did forget to mention is handling the entering of a invalid operation. So as you can see, when they enter in anything that isn't in our li possible list of options, we say that the answer is an invalid operation, we print it, and then the function ends. So we really don't need to deal with that too much because we used an else statement here to handle that. So it's just an example of you don't always need to use tries and accepts, but they can be useful if there is a possibility of your program crashing, like in this case. Um, so back to the other error that we need to handle is when we're dividing. So instead of just going ahead and dividing, we can try to divide, right? And then we can accept the error. And the only error we know that can happen when you're dividing two numbers and the numbers are valid numbers, as we've already verified that over there, is that you can have the zero division error. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, accept the zero division error as an error. And we'll print um, invalid equation, invalid equation, because when you try to divide by zero, that is an invalid mathematical statement. So we'll say that is an invalid equation. Put a new line to give some space by using the slash n character. Print the error. Um, go ahead and print something like try again and actually add a slash n near the beginning to give it some space and then use the return keyword to break as soon as there's an error occurring. So in practice, this should work perfectly fine and handle any errors that, um, that may occur when you're using a calculator. So for example, we enter in a invalid string, it couldn't convert it, told us to try again, and it brought us back up to the first thing that we're doing. So say we entered in something nice, something bad, 
it didn't like that, it handled it, and it looped us back to the beginning. So say we did something good, like a valid number, but we tr we were, we're going to try and mess it up and see what happens when we try and divide by zero. So as you can see, it tells us that we have an invalid equation, and the oh, float division by zero is what happened as the error, and it tells us to try again. And it tells us to please enter your first number. So that's it for this video. Um, once again, any questions, just ask in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.